Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about uh, my very own Nixie tube tester. This is a Nixie tube. Uh, Nixie actually, I think, stands for Neon um, Indicator, Neon Indicator Experimental. They were developed in the 50s, I think, as digital display units. Uh, so if you wanted to put them on a calculator or a radio frequency or a counter or something you would have several of these stacked together and uh, you know they would just just form a digital display so uh, these have become quite popular um, recently among hobbyists and what people do is uh, they they make all kinds of stuff out of them like clocks uh, and things like that. I believe Steve Wozniak actually made a, a wristwatch out of uh, some of these Nixie tubes. Anyway, in this video I want to show you how to, uh, basically how a Nixie tube works and how to uh, build a circuit uh, on your own that you can use to then control the Nixie tube, display numbers and uh, if you'd like you could stack them and uh, make your own clock or you know something like that. So first let's talk about what exactly is a Nixie tube all right so let me move this out of the way okay let me see if I can get it in screen all right this is a Nixie tube this particular model is called the IN12 Nixie it's made in Russia and this one was made in 1979 and what it is is it's this enclosed glass case inside which is an inert gas usually argon maybe neon a little bit of mercury and it has these pins you can see the pins now it's better is it in let me see if I can just focus this a little bit better So hopefully that's a little better focusing right so these pins is what uh, what connect to the electronics inside and one of these pins if you'll notice got that little white can you see this uh, uh, it's a little glare but one of them has a little white coating on its there you see that corner pin you see that white coating there right there that's the anode and that's the positive supply pin and all the others all the other pins connect to the the digits and they 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 would control the digits and get them to light up so if you look at the front you can actually see the digits are these uh, metallic kind of uh, you know they're they shapes shaped like numbers and they're they're metallic uh, structures that are actually lined up one after the other and you can see them in a line if you look at the Nixie tube from the side there you see them all in a line it's a little difficult to see but there you, are. Okay. There, you see them you can see them now one after the other in a layer and they're separated by these ceramic discs you can see that right in the center this these ceramic discs and uh, you can even see the very fine wires that connect them to their pins you see these little black wires uh, that connect them to their pins and the idea is that you apply a high voltage 170 volts to the anode and to the anode and uh, the electrons move from these cathodes depending on which of the cathodes you actually connect into the circuit at that moment the electrons will move from that cathode to the anode and as they do so the the gas around the cathode gets excited and it kind of glows and so that's what you're seeing here if I bring this back you can see that the cathodes are lighting up one by one so the cathodes light up one by one as I connect the cathodes one at a time 
and they produce a glow on the on the metal surface that's the that's the gas glowing so that's how it works that's it working uh, and basically how it works let's now talk about how do we connect these up uh, and make a circuit with these So here's the Nixie tube, uh, the, the from the data sheet what it actually looks like. This is the Nixie tube over here, and you can see the the individual pins with their pin numbers, uh, you know, indicated in in the diagram. And on top we have the IC. So this is the integrated circuit that controls each Nixie tube. This is a you can this is basically called a PCD converter binary coded decimal converter. But this particular one is a Russian IC. It's called the K155 EDA1. Uh, but you can get um, Western ICs that do the same job. I think the IC 74141 also does the same job. Um, and so what they do is this IC, you can see it's got these pins with uh, digits on it 0, 1, 5, 4, 6, 7, 3, 2, 8, and 9. And so each one of these pins connects to one of the cathodes on the Nixie tube and depending on which pin gets energized that particular cathode comes into the circuit and it glows because the the anode has always got its positive supply so whichever one of these cathodes you connect by energizing these pins that particular cathode comes into the circuit and the Nixie tube starts glowing now so how do you control which one of these pins is actually on at any time and you do that with these four pins on top by sending signals to these four. You can see them here A, B, C, and D. They're actually in a different order A, D, B, C over here. Uh, so, depending on the inputs that you give to A, D, B, and C, these pins, this, this IC will select one of these pins to light up. And the input that you give is actually just a binary number. So, if you wanted, say, 7 to glow. Uh, 7 in binary code is 111 so you would send 0111 into these ABCD pins and this particular pin would energize and this pin is then connected to pin 7 and so uh, cathode number 7 would energize that's for in another case let's say you wanted to send um, uh, you wanted to indicate the number 3 now 3 in binary code is 10 Am I right? No, 3 is actually 1, 1. So if you send 0, 0, 1, 1 to this uh, IC, it will energize pin number 3 and uh, then that will light up cathode number 3. So that's how it will it, work. Okay, but there's one issue and that is, whoops. okay so the issue is now here's the same diagram again but this time I've tried to connect you know just with this uh, these blue and red lines and all this I've tried to connect the pins and show you what I mean now look at this if you connect uh, pin 11 sorry this is number 6 you see this here 6 so 6 is connected to 6 and if 7 were then to be connected to 7 you can see the wires would have to cross over but that's a bit of a problem because you can't do that uh, look again over here. So 8 on top here on the IC pin number 8 gets connected to pin 8 on the Nixie. Pin 9 goes to pin 9 on the Nixie but when you try to connect pin 0 directly to pin 10 which is actually the 0 decimal on the Nixie you can see you got to cross over these wires so that's a bigger problem which we will overcome. So a lot of people actually solve this problem by using double sided PCBs. So you would put some of these lines on one side of the PCB and some of them on the other. And so they, you wouldn't have any crisscross happening. But uh, I found that a little difficult to implement. Uh, so I came up with a different method which I'll share with you. Finally, so how do you control these? What signals do you send to these ADBC pins? And that's over here. This is the truth table. Um, from the the data sheet of the of the K155 IC so you can see that 
pin A, B, C and D if you send a low so that's a zero voltage on A, B, C and D the output will show on the zero pin and the same way let's look at something else let's look at this number if you wanted the output pin number five to to, to energize you would have to send a low high low high if you wanted pin number eight to energize you'd have to send a high low 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 now if you know binary code you can just tell that this is just binary numbers zero zero where low is a zero and h a high is a is a one so it's just zero 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 one zero zero one zero and so on now what if you wanted to turn um, the Nixie off completely well then you could just send any of these codes uh, to the IC any of these and the Nixie would go off so if you sent uh, 1010 the Nixie tube would just turn off so that's how we will control the the IC itself from we'll use a microcontroller and we'll program microcontroller in C++ to send these signals onto the pins of the of the IC controlling IC so I designed my circuit in uh, Fritzing Fritzing is a free application you can use to uh, to design ICs and uh, sorry not ICs but design PCBs with various components and uh, you know you start you can use a breadboard to connect up your components and then you can design your own PCB and route the wires as you want so this is the circuit in Fritzing you can see here this is the IN12 uh, Nixie tube and this IC represents the the controller IC so the the, the K155 IC now you can see if I connect each pin to its intended destination on the Nixie tube you can see immediately that there's a lot of crossing over that's happening can you see these wires have crossed over so these orange wires are, seem to be below these wires and I've had to, to to make it work I've actually had to reduce the trace size of this wire you can see it's a very thin wire whereas the others are quite thick similar this is a thin one because it had to actually go between pins in order to avoid the crossover and I've had to I ended up having to do this on a double-sided PCB that's why you see some of these wires are yellow and the others are orange so the orange ones are actually on the back of the PCB so initially I tried this approach and this is what most people uh, use uh, you know either pre-made PCBs or uh, they call them breakout boards which you can buy they're a little expensive but uh, you can buy them and they use utilize this double-sided technique so um, and in the end in the end when I actually printed this out and tried to etch it I couldn't actually align up the two sides so I decided to, to, to try another approach using software which actually worked out quite well for me and so I'd like to share that with you. This is my circuit, the one uh, I made on my own and as you can see it's a lot neater and uh, it looks a lot more presentable than the, than the one I showed you earlier. Uh, and I've even actually added the microcontroller which is an Arduino Nano and the power supply unit so this is now the the Russian IC the K155 IC here's the IN12 and you can see I've, it looks I've just connected them now in whatever seems like the natural way to do things so you know they, there's no crossover everything looks neat but you'll notice the pins are not connected correctly so for instance the output pin um, I believe this is the output pin for on the IC this actually is the output pin for pin 8 I think but where it's when you when you follow the line trace down like this and see it's actually going to um, which pin is this this is actually pin 9 on the on the uh, Nixie tube and the same way you know so nothing is connected in the way that it should be as per the the data sheet of the IC they're all they you know, all the pins are connected wrong but the advantage is they're all on one side of the PCB and there's no overlap there's no crisscrossing taking place um, but I would like to point out one thing and this IC can actually handle only 10 output points okay so that's digits 0 to 9 uh, that's 10 outputs but if you look at the Nixie it's actually got 12 pins 
So if you count one of them as the as the power pin, that's this one, the anode. This is the anode, and uh, it you know it connects directly to the power supply. The other 11 pins. So how would you control 11 pins with only you know 11 pins on the Nixie with only 10 on the on the IC? You can't. So because I just wanted to do build this as a testing circuit, I kind of included these jumper wires. So this one line, which is coming out of pin 9 on the IC can be connected to either this line or this line. Turns out that this is digit one. You can see that here. And this actually says no connection, but what this is is actually a little decimal point. So um, in this particular circuit, you can either choose to put on the decimal point or put on one. You know, you can turn this on or you can turn this on or you could turn them both on, uh, but you're only using one out output. So in a real circuit, if you wanted to use the decimal point, you'd have to add another IC like this, which would then control that decimal point as well. But so it looks neat. But the question is, how are we now going to, through software, uh, deal with this problem in that the pins are not connected properly? So you know, the pins over here, maybe maybe pin number, which should actually turn on pin three, is actually connected somewhere else, maybe to pin four. And uh, you know, so we'll use software to do that. So I'd like to share that with you. On top, you can see the microcontroller, and that's these are the pins A, B, C, and D. Uh, sorry, whatever order they're supposed to be in. A, B, C, D, basically the incoming pins, and those are controlled by the microcontroller here. You can see these these four. And uh, in the Arduino, it's D6, D5, D3, and D2. Uh, the four digital pins that will control this IC. On top, we have a power supply unit, and uh, so there's three basic wires over here one of them is a ground wire that's this one and so that ground basically gives a common ground to all the electronics in the, the microcontroller as well as the IC there's this one which is the 5 volt line and that powers the microcontroller and also provides the power to run this IC and then there's this high voltage line this one which is at 170 volts that goes through this resistor to directly through the resistor to the anode of the IN12. So that's the entire circuit. Um, and uh, so let's move on to the software and um, I'll talk about how I actually resolved this issue of connecting these pins. Through software we, 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 we overcome this issue that the pins are not connected properly. So let's move on to the software. Here's the Arduino code. So this is in the Arduino IDE, it's in C++. And what I did was I created this class called NixieTube. And this class encapsulates all the methods and functions needed to control a NixieTube. So this entire code, all the way down till here. So this is the class uh, all, all these functions are part of the class NixieTube. So if you wanted to incorporate this into uh, you know your own projects, you just need to copy this entire class all the way up to the top and then initiate a NixieTube with this function like this, Nixie, NixieTube N1. Oops. Yeah, so NixieTube, uh, you wanted to create a NixieTube, you just need to import this, in, use this class and um, I just create a NixieTube by uh, declaring which pins you intend to use for which which of the BCD outputs. So in my case, uh, I'm initiating the NixieTube with pin 6, 3, 2, and 5. And these are all digital output pins on the Arduino. And since I'm only using four pins, the Arduino has plenty of pins spare, uh, you know, for other stuff, uh, or even adding more NixieTubes um, to, to the circuit if I wanted to. All right, so let's see how the class works. Um, we'll define uh, four variables uh, that will actually uh, be the four pins that uh, this particular Nixie will be controlled through. So A, B, C, and D. We'll, uh, we'll create a constructor. Um, well, if you know C++ and how classes work, you know that uh, whenever you create a class, you need a constructor. We'll have two methods. One is the write method, which takes as argument one digit. So whichever digit, say, um, say digit seven, if you fed seven in uh, as an integer value to this function write, uh, the NixieTube would uh, glow 
uh, would light up the you know uh, the digit seven. And uh, we'd also create a function a method called turn off, which just turns off the Nixie. I've written a long kind of description here. You remember there was uh, I, I mentioned about the wiring issues that my wiring is all uh, you know topsy turvy from the IC to the Nixie tube. So this is the explanation of how I actually uh, got over that issue through the software. Uh, so you can go through this if you're interested on how I did it. I'll just briefly explain it here. So what I've done is I've created a lookup table with uh, which is actually 10 um, integers wide. So this is the lookup table here. And the index of each of these lookup tables, all right, is the index of each. So the index of this digit is zero. The index of this one is one. The index of this one is two. So each of these indexes represent the number we actually want to light up on the Nixie. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to light up, say, number uh, four on the Nixie, okay, so I look for the fourth index here. So that's, uh, okay, let's choose another one. Let's choose uh, index six, for instance. So if I wanted to light up digit six on the Nixie, I would look up on this lookup table, I would look up index number six. So one, zero, sorry, this is zero, zeroth index, one index, two index, three index, four index, five index, six. So this is the sixth index of this lookup table. And if I want to light up digit six, I would actually turn pin one on. And that's just how I've wired it up. So let's give, take another example. On my IC, uh, my output from the BCD, uh, say, which is uh, pin 2, for instance, is actually connected to pin 7 on the um, on the uh, on the on the Nixie. So again, if I wanted to light up digit 2, I would look up look up use the lookup table and then go 0, 1, 2. And so if I lit up pin number 7 on the on the IC, uh, digit 2 would actually light up on the Nixie. Similarly, if I wanted to light up, um, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, if I wanted to light up uh, digit 3 on the Nixie, I would use index number 3, and the BCD output from the chip would, from 6, would actually be connected to pin 3 uh, on, the, on the Nixie tube. Uh, it sounds a little confusing, but Think of this, if you know Python, just think of this as kind of like a dictionary where, you know, if, if this was Python, uh, the dictionary would look up something, would look something like this. So let me just try and do it. So lookup table is equal to, and so zero goes to nine, and then one goes to three, and then two goes to seven, and uh, three goes to six, something like this. So this is what the dictionary would look like if you're using Python. So if you want to turn on digit zero, tell the IC that to turn on its pin number nine. If you want to turn on digit one, tell the IC to turn on its pin number three. If you want to turn on pin number, uh, sorry, if you want to turn on digit number three, tell the IC to turn on its sixth pin. So that's what it, that's just basically what it is, just a lookup table. And you don't have dictionaries in C, so uh, I've just used index numbers, so index 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. All right, now these are the member functions for the Nixie tube. Um, you know, you can, uh, so we create the Nixie tube with this. This is the write function, and so what the write function does is, um, it looks, it literally looks up in the lookup table for whatever you want to turn on, all right? It translates that to another numeral, and uh, and then it knows what digit to turn on. Then we do some bitwise operations. So, uh, if you're familiar with Boolean algebra, basically bitwise operations are taking a decimal number, so something like seven, and then trying to figure out how does how do pins A, B, C, and D are they to be turned on and off when we are trying to represent a decimal number seven. So uh, this operator is, is a bitwise operator. So to so for each pin, we do one bitwise operation. 
So for pin D, we do the bitwise operation with 8. And depending on the result of that operation, we either, uh, you know, make the pin D high or pin D low. And then for pin C, we do the bitwise operation with 4. With pin B, we uh, do the bitwise operation with 2. And then for pin A, we do it uh, with the value 1. Uh, bitwise operation of that num of the of the intended number with one, and uh, so we end up with four boolean values: boolean D, C, B, and A. All right, and then we just then just write those values to the to the microcontroller pins. So that's the class. Now you don't have to if you are trying to build this and you're not sure not exactly understanding how I did this that's fine you just need to copy this entire class and it'll just work out of the box. Uh, all you need to do is just create your Nixie tube make sure you have the pins correctly designated uh, correctly designated to the to the to the to the pins that lead into the to the IC all right now you can choose to do it through the serial port where uh, so that's so this is the loop function here um, yeah so this is the loop function uh, so if you want to control the Nixie through the serial port you could do it with this or what I've done is just because it's just a Nixie tester uh, it's just to cycle through the values in a loop so I'm going from 0 to uh, 9 in this for loop. I write the values to the Nixie one by one with this function um, and notice that when I use when I when I write a value this even though this number is the actual number that lights up then the the BCD chip the IK155 chip actually thinks it's turning on some other pin uh, based on that lookup table so that's how it works we delay for a second uh, then we turn everything off uh, and once the loop is over, once all the digits have been written one by one, we just turn it off and then uh, we delay for five seconds and then run the program again. So this is the Arduino code. Uh, I've written this long explanation here on how that lookup table works. So if you're interested, uh, please have a look and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, you can use this, this basic idea for any kind of uh, PCB uh, issue in which you find that you know you have the wiring is crisscrossing and you need to use a double-sided PCB just use software and a lookup table to overcome that problem uh, that's that's my takeaway from this whole project is I don't have to worry about double-sided PCBs anymore so that's the Arduino code I'll include the code also uh, I'll upload the code uh, as well as the PCB in the in the video description for you so yeah, um, do do leave a comment below if you have any questions on this code uh, or, or how it works. So here's the final circuit. Um, you can see it's been etched uh, on only one side, uh, just like I showed you on the Fritzing program. You can see the microcontroller on top, uh, and this is the, the Russian IC, the Nixie tube. So, here's the microcontroller. That's an Arduino Nano. Uh, just below it, over here, is the Russian IC K155 uh, ED1 IC. And uh, over here are the two jumpers I told you about because uh, there's there's not enough pins on this IC to control all the pins on the Nixie so you'll notice when the digit 1 shows up it'll show up with a decimal point right next to it so just watch that 0 and then 1 with the decimal point over there so this is that's these jumper wires so if you if you take off one of them uh, disconnect one of them then you can choose whether you want the the decimal point or the numeral 1 to up to appear over here we have uh, the main power supply unit. So this is a hundred and seven. This steps up. Incoming to this is uh, these these two uh, uh, these two terminals. That's a twelve volt supply. 
and this converts that 12 volts into 170 volts DC so uh, I would uh, advise extreme caution when dealing with uh, this high voltage electronics so if you don't know what you're doing uh, I wouldn't recommend this project especially with uh, since you're dealing with high voltage stuff and this this 180 170 volts can actually give you a nasty shock anyway so we have 180 volts coming out from this now and that 180 volts goes through this resistor directly to the anode pin on the Nixie on the Nixie and uh, the cathodes are then controlled through the IC and the IC gets its uh, controlling orders from the microcontroller from the four pins A, B, C, D and accordingly the IC turns on the required cathode and you see the digit then lighting up um, so these Nixie tubes are really beautiful devices um, they, they have a kind of nice warmth about them that uh, modern electronics just don't have so uh, thanks for watching uh, I hope you understood uh, how I built this and uh, why it's it's so much better than using a double sided PCB because it's just so much easier to make and build. So thank you for watching and uh, do post any questions or comments that you have. I will upload the Arduino code as well as the Fritzing circuit diagram uh, and uh, add a link to that uh, in the video description. So if you feel like building the circuit yourself, please feel free and let me know how it works out. Thank you.